Thank you very much. Cool, so um, tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, making a difference with animation. But before I start, I would like to uh, say thank you to David and Fiona for inviting me to be here tonight. And you guys being here, I feel really pleased to be able to talk to you guys. Uh, thanks, thanks for that. And I'm going to also give you a bit of introduction, even if he already introduced me a little bit briefly. It's not all about uh, being a lifeguard. Uh, but, um, so yeah, I'm a product designer at uh, Campaign Monitor. And, um, and yeah, as you might have guessed by, uh, by my accent, um, I'm, also, I'm also French. <laughs> so yeah, thanks God I moved to Australia, so I don't have to write this table shirt. I can wear normal stuff now. Thanks God. Uh, yeah, so what I'm going to... Um, show you first is basically some um, some examples I've found about bad animations slash lack of animation in user interfaces websites. So this is the first one I found that's pretty pretty bad example. Like that's uh, too much stuff going on. GIF, uh, don't like that. <laughs> no, most seriously, this is I just picked Twitter. Uh, Twitter.com, I'm sure you guys are really familiar with that website. Uh, so it's my feed, um, and when you get a new feed up there, view a new tweet, you click it, and it's really abrupt. It's like the new, t the new tweet that you just want to happy, it just happy all of a sudden, really abrupt. And I don't think that's that's a nice animation. It's basically a lack of animation, no animation. And here's a quick solution on how how I would improve that really quickly. Like that would be. Like nicely fed out that link and then make that thing coming in um, and all the other tweets sliding down. I think that feels much nicer. That was a quick, quick solution to improve that uh, interface and make it more usable and feels better. Um, second example, uh, that's Dribble, um, and that's that's a shot. Um, so they call that shot. So basically, screenshots of of a project that sh that you wanna show on Dribble. And here up there, there's a show this image in, in double the size, basically. So you click on this add two times link. And when you click it, that's, that's what's happening, right? It's that size then get bigger, takes time to load the full size image, and then gets bigger, right? It's really abrupt. It doesn't feel that nice, I think. And here's how they could have done that way nice, in a better way, just using CSS3 transitions, uh, sliding that thing to the left, feels much nicer, right? So yeah, quick, here are a few, if you want to display, yeah, it's a bit slow. A uh, few key points that make, from my point of view, a good animation. So, from my, a good animation can improve usability. Second point, animation should feel natural and so, so that is really important. Doesn't want to, you don't want to overdo animation, right? If things are moving around, like you don't want to do that. You want to make it subtle. And animation is a feedback on what's happening on your screen, and that's why they are important in user interfaces. You make the user understand what's happening. And in fact, animation should should feel invisible. You shouldn't notice that that you're looking at animation in your interface. Um, so I had a selection of really good animation um, that I really love. So that's, that's the one from iOS. The first time they did that update, when they added that uh, camera icon in the bottom right, um, I didn't know that I had to, to slide, slide up to, uh, to get to the camera. And what they do is like, if you just press that, that icon, they do that nice bounce animation, so you understand that you need to slide up next time you, you, wanna, you wanna get to the camera. So you're gonna, Example is path. This one may be, may be overdone, maybe a bit too much to spinning, maybe. But at <laughs> least, <laughs> at least uh, the animation shows you that all of those sub icons are coming from this one. The plus become a cross, you understand you can close that thing. And it makes sense. Like if just those icons were just appearing, I don't think it would be obvious that they would be attached to that, to that icon in the bottom left corner. Another example, I really love this one. Strap is a, it's a payment solution, um, and basically, at some at some point, when you when you want to pay for a product on any e-commerce website, that use Strap service. 
um, you basically enter your phone number and you need to they send you uh, an SMS with a with a code that you need to enter in that in those fields up there. And what they do, just by adding some animation, they, they basically show you, hey, we're sending the code, we give you some feedback on what's happening. It's been sent, here we go, we just sent your text message to whatever number. And that's, that's, that's good for the user, right? They understand what's happening, it's a better user experience. Uh, and in fact, the actual time to receive, to receive that text stays the same, but feels much better, better user experience, just by adding those little animation. So, now I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna basically do a little case study of uh, something I've been, been working on at Campaign Monitor, it's called uh, Canvas. You can get some more information if you go to canvas.cm. But basically Canvas is um, the online drag and drop tool that allows anyone to basically um, design, build HTML emails that look beautiful on any, on any device, like from mobile to desktop, they are responsive. I mean, responsive for email, it's not really responsive, but <laughs> it, wo it works on any device basically and any email client from Outlook, from the latest Gmail and all that, so, and they look beautiful. Anyway, I've got, also got a quick video that explains what Canvas is, so it be better than my words, I think, so here's the video, fully. Oh. So here you pick the templates to send your email. A layout, a potential layout you can pick from, drag it. Add content text. Yeah, you can create all those beautiful templates, it's amazing. <laughs> so Canvas, right. Um, so the reason why I'm talking about Canvas is because I'm going to show you some couple of pieces of UI I've been working on and added animation to, make, to improve the user experience of Canvas and uh, improve the usability. To make it also feel so much nicer. So first, first example is um, the accordion. Uh, so that's that's before the, how it was. Uh, no animation. Basically, you click on the header, and the content underneath it just appears. Click. Pretty bad. And that's that's how it looked after. Content nicely fades in and. Uh, actually, it just slides down and then the content fades in the form. And as you're right, I picked the nice URL, meetup.com.css. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm going to show you step by step basically of how I got to that, to that result. It's pretty basic CSS3 uh, code, it's pretty basic, but um, what really matters is, is actually the principles of animation behind it and how to get the right easing, the right timing, and all of that to make it feel nice and invisible, as I said earlier. So, first step, that's how it looks. Just click on the header, it appears pretty abruptly. So yeah, I put in here on the left some sample code that it's obviously really I simplified it for to make it more presentable. <laughs> but basically, when you click on the header here, uh, we trigger an active class and to, to that div, which is the content of that accordion. And within that accordion, there was a form. So display none, display block, pretty basic, right? Second step, make that thing slice down so you understand what what that content is attached to. It's better user experience, I think. But uh, pretty basic for accordion, right? Um, so hey, instead of using display none, display block, what I'm doing, I'm, at the beginning, the height of the div is zero. And when the active class is being triggered, I turn that into 300 pixel, which is what the height of that element there. And I'm doing a transition over 0.3 thick, and 
basically changing the max height from 0 to 300 pixels, doing a nice ease out. So ease out is basically slowing down the animation at the end so it feels more natural instead of having something linear. Linear things never happen in life. They always have some easing. When you stop, you're slowing down before stopping, right? Um, third step to make that form nicely fading in and uh, scaling up a little bit. Um, so here in purple is the previous code that I had. But what I did here, I, I added some some transition, some animation on the form itself within that div. Uh, so that's the first first stage when it's not being displayed. Opacity zero. And uh, I make sure I'm basically scaling the size of that form a little bit smaller than it should be. So I scale it to 0 0.9 instead of 1. And when that active class gets triggered, um, I turn the opacity into 1 and scale it to 1. So it gets its final size. Okay, so just adding this nice animation. Uh, second piece of layer. Um, so the R layout, so that's at the bottom of canvas, um, you can you can add layouts to, to your email template and you can pick for a bunch of layout, uh, nicely designed, works perfectly. That's how it was before. You just click on add layout button and that drop down just appears pretty abruptly. It doesn't feel that nice. And what I wanted to do is show to the user that that drop down is attached to that button. So when you press that button up there, add layer, it's going to come now. <coughs> it basically comes from the button. So it's highlight the fact that it's coming from the button. But as experience, you understand what I don't think it's going to be nice feedback on what's happening. So first step, it's really similar to the accordion. Uh, pretty basic CSS. I'm sure all of you guys are really good at CSS. So. <laughs> Uh, simple, simple markup on the left again here, button with the other layout link, and the div underneath is basically the drop down with the layouts that you can pick from. That's what it was doing at the beginning, display on display block. Second step, it's really small different. Uh, it's basically fading from zero to, to one, but instead of just doing it abruptly just do it over 0 0.1 sec or 0 0.2 sec. Uh, so that's why it's doing opacity 0. When we trigger the active class, it gets to opacity 1. And uh, and we're doing a transition uh, over 0 0.2 sec uh, on the opacity and uh, adding a nice easing. So feel more natural again. Um, and last step, basically make that thing Coming uh, from the from the button, um, uh, so basically here what I'm doing, um, I'm scaling that drop down up from like a small size and then making making it come from the top. So here's the in orange that previous previous CSS I've shown in the slide before, uh, and that's how the CSS looks like. So basically, at the beginning, transform it on. I scale that drop down to 0 0.2, so it's basically the size of the button. And I'm translating y, that thing, by minus 37%. So I had to go in the browser and, and find out that minus 37% was the actual um, thing that make it look right and come from the button. And then when I trigger the active class, I switch the opacity to 1 from the previous slide. And Scale the thing to one so it gets the, its normal size and translate uh, y to zero so it gets the actual size it was uh, the actual position it was supposed to be in. And again, what really like what really matters is about timing, the right timing, finding the right easing to make that thing looks nice. Uh, so here zero point two six on transform and is up. Um, I've got. Um, a few key takeaways that it would be nice if, if you guys, uh, I would like you guys to remember them uh, from, from that talk. Um, basically, what I want to say is that complex technique uh, doesn't mean good animation. As you've seen, it's like basic basics of CSS3 animation, transitions, 
nothing too fancy there, right? But it's more about the principles of animation, getting the easing right, getting the timing right, like the all of those things that that make actually was hard actually for that project. Looks easy, but it's a lot of thinking behind the right timing. I've done a lot of tests and and yeah, to find it right. Second point, uh, yeah, static static user interfaces suck. I uh, thought if you can remember that would be good and add some more transitions in your in your project that would be nice. Um, and as I said earlier, good animation should feel invisible. Um, you shouldn't notice that you're looking at animation. Um, I've also got um, some resources here if you're interested in in learning more about animation. My, one of my favorite one is uh, Disney's 12 Principles of Animation. They basically explain what all principles of animation that they use in the in the in their what do you say movies, comics? Yeah, comics. That's right. Uh, and you basically can reuse those principles to user interfaces. Uh, they're great. I've got plenty of uh, of other examples. This one's basically a talk from uh, last year conference organized by Web Direction from Pascal de Silva. Really good. And here are some more, but I will probably share the slide after after that, so you can check that out later. And that's it for me. So thank you very much. Um.